Hi guys, today we are going to read The Corgi and the Queen. Elizabeth of York was in the storybook Princess. Her younger sister Margaret loved playing dress up in their mother's fancy gowns and twirling around her room in a diamond tiara. But Elizabeth was happiest wearing normal clothes and playing fetch with the family's dogs, Dookie and Jane. She spent afternoons at the stable grooming her Shetland pony, Peggy. You should have been a farm girl instead of a princess, Margaret, Margaret teased. <clears throat> when Elizabeth was only 11 years old, her life changed forever. Her father was crowned King George VI. The family moved to the grandest house in the nation. Buckingham Palace was a cold and drafty place. The floorboards creaked with when Elizabeth, Margaret, and the dogs snuck off to explore the 775 rooms. They peeked into echoey chambers with ordnance ceilings and gaped at the portraits of royal ancestors adorning the walls. They were scared to touch the priceless antique furnishings. It was a truly magnificent residence, but it certainly wasn't homey. People bowed and criticized to in King George's presence. Everyone called him Your Majesty. He was just Papa to Elizabeth, but Papa said that his little, little bit would have to get used to all the fuss. Someday she would be queen. The king and queen traveled the world. They went away for weeks, sometimes months at a time. Elizabeth and Margaret stayed behind. A queen in waiting was expected to be perfect at all times, but Dookie and Jane didn't have to worry about being proper. The festy Pembroke Welsh corgis had no regard for royal rules. They barked at the princess's stern governess. They chased palace servants around the great halls and wrestled when world leaders came to visit. Elizabeth wished that she, that she too could go wild sometimes. When Elizabeth was 13, World War II broke out in Europe. For their safety, the princesses were sent away from London to Windsor Castle. The king and queen stayed at Buckingham Palace. Even in their new home, Elizabeth and Margaret often woke to the loud shrill of air raid sirens. They huddled together in the underground vaults of the castle behind hat boxes and cookie jars that hid the priceless crown jewels. It was freezing cold and the jewels, the girls, were lonely and scared. The dogs never left their sides. War was still raging when Elizabeth turned 18. Papa told her she could choose any gift her heart desired. You must ask for a car, Margaret urged. Fine jewelry fit for a princess, Mama suggested. A new royal title, palace advisors proposed. Elizabeth asked for only one thing. I want a puppy of my own, she declared. The princess got her wish, a corky pup she named Susan. Elizabeth's heart swelled when she killed the tiny dog. It wasn't easy for a future queen to make friends. At last, she had her, she had her very own constant companion. Susan was small but rambunctious. She loved to show off her herding skills. There weren't there weren't any sheep in the, at the castle, so she rounded up squirrels. When enemy planes flew overhead, she growled and guarded the princess like a precious lamb. Elizabeth was captivated by the little corgi. She hand fed her from a silver platter and walked her twice a day. She told Susan stories and stroked the puppy's soft belly. <clears throat> the princesses had to learn to bury their emotions, but somehow Susan knew exactly how she was feeling. The corgi nuzzled close when Elizabeth argued with her sister. Susan dropped toys at princess's feet to cheer her up during long, boring lessons on constitutional history. She comforted her companion when the sounds of battle kept them awake at night. Having Susan at her side gave Elizabeth courage. 
She pleaded with Papa to let her join the war effort. It isn't fitting for a future queen, royal advisors wailed. I'm not an ordinary princess, Elizabeth insisted, and I have no intentions of being an ordinary queen. She knew that she had to help her country. Eventually, the king relented and Isabel Elizabeth joined the woman's regiment. She learned how to be a mechanic and she drove military trucks and ambulances. She became an expert at changing tires and fixing engines. Elizabeth returned to Windsor Castle each night, exhausted and covered with grease. Her dressers winced when they saw her oil-smudged face and filthy overalls. But Susan always leaped into Elizabeth's arms. The, royal, the loyal corgi didn't care about her appearance. The princess knew that her beloved pet was proud of her. At last, the war was over. Back at Buckingham Palace, the dogs lived like royalty. They moved into their own special corgi room. At the time, they curled up in cozy wicker baskets, raised off the ground to avoid chilly drafts. Their sheets were changed every day. They ate gourmet food prepared by palace chefs. Elizabeth took care of all the dogs. She even made each pet a treat-filled stocking at Christmas. But Susan was the apple of her eye. Not everyone loved Susan as much as the princess did. Ow! The royal clock winder yelped when the dog nipped him on the bottom, ripping a hole in his pants. Out! The king yelled when Susan snuck into the state's dining room and stole a filet mignon from his plate. Ah! Margaret screamed when she stepped on a live mouse that Susan had hidden in her jewel slipper. The corgi was often in the doghouse, but Elizabeth always took her side. 20-year-old Elizabeth had fallen in love. Philip Mountbatten was handsome and kind, and the future queen was smitten. But before she accepted Philip's proposal, she had to be sure of one thing. Would Susan like him? The corgi snarled the people she didn't care for, but Philip petted her gently. She fell asleep at his feet. Susan approved. Elizabeth's wedding was the most lavish event of the decade. Extravagant gifts arrived from all corners of the globe. They filled an entire room at the palace. Invitations were sent to 2,000 Viscounts, VIPs, duchess, duchesses, dames, but the princess's closest companion wasn't on the guest list. Elizabeth's lady-in-waiting had hatched a plan to make Susan a secret part of the celebration. After the ceremony on November 20th, 1947, the newlyweds rode across London in an elegant glass coach. Hundreds of thousands of well-wishers lined the streets, their, chancing, their chants were deafening. Adults and children waited for hours, hoping to catch a glimpse, glimpse of the radiant royal bride. Not one of them realized that Susan was a stowaway in the glided carriage hidden beneath a hand-woven rug on the floor. Palace staff was smuggled between palace staff had smuggled the dog on board with a stash of special treats and a hot water bottle to keep her warm. While, while waving at jubilant crowds, Elizabeth would, could feel Susan playing at her feet. On the biggest day of her life, she had her best friend by her side. The following year, Elizabeth gave birth to a son, Charles. Susan also became a mom. She had two puppies named Sugar and Honey. The corgis traveled everywhere with the princess and her young family. Susan protected all of the babies in the royal residence. When Elizabeth was only tw 25, her father passed away. In a grand ceremony, she was crowned Queen Elizabeth II. Millions of royal coronation and the world cheered for the beautiful young monarch. Elizabeth smiled for the cameras. A queen couldn't cry in public, but she sobbed for her pop when she was alone with Susan. Elizabeth soon learned how to be a great ruler. She welcomed people from all nations and faiths into her home. 
She worked hard to promote kindness and bridge divides. Susan was always by her side. But one cold January day, the barking stopped. The queen buried Susan on the grounds of the San Bergam estate, where her playful dog had loved to run and chase pigeons. Elizabeth chose the inscription for Susan's headstone for almost 15 years, the faithful companion of the queen. No monarch has ruled longer than Queen Elizabeth II. The queen has owned at least 30 corgis over the course of her long life. My corgis are family, she, says, she has said. 14 generations of these cherished dogs were descended from Susan. Elizabeth has never forgotten the corgi who helped a young princess learn how to become a beloved queen. Susan's legacy lives on.